now we get down to something far more important, far more serious. In August of 05, a roadside bomb killed 14 U.S. Marines in, in Haditha, Iraq. Okay? What happens afterwards is in November 19, 2005, a Marine and 24 Iraqi civilians, quote-unquote, are killed in Haditha. February of 06, a Time Magazine left-wing reporter, Tim McGurk, contacts military sources in Baghdad, starts an inquiry in the military, and then in May of 06, the despicable U.S. Representative John Murtha, the pig from Pennsylvania who recently died, speaks about a November 19th incident in Haditha saying that our four troops killed innocent civilians in cold blood and compared them to Nazis. As a result, Marines are charged with murder. Charges of dereliction of duty are charged against Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Chassani, who was not even at the point of action. It goes on and on and on, on and on and on. We've talked about on this case for years. And on December 11th, after three hours of deliberation, the Military Board of Inquiry rules that Lieutenant Colonel Chassani was not guilty of misconduct and should not be demoted. Nevertheless, the board's ruling is, is a mixed result. It says Chassani, a certifiable war hero who has given most of his adult life to the United States government, must now retire because he, quote, displayed substandard performance by failing to conduct a more detailed investigation of the civilians killed as a result of the house-clearing actions of four Marines after they were ambushed in Haditha. Joining us now is Lieutenant Colonel Chassani. Welcome to the Savage Nation, and uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Dr. Savage. I really appreciate you uh, having me on today. Well, we did everything we could for you, you know, in, in the sense of uh, being civilians. How do you feel today with the decision of the board? You know, Dr. Savage, I, I praise the Lord for taking care of me and my family. I'm thankful that uh, I'm, I'm getting to retire, that I'm uh, retired. Actually, today was my last day of active duty in the Marine Corps, and uh, I'll actually be retired on the 30th of September. And I, I'm just thankful that uh, I'm, I'm where I am right now. And, and i, I got to tell you, um, I'm indebted to you and your listeners. You guys were just a tremendous blessing to me. Um, well, wait, wait, so wait. Colonel, listen, we're indebted to you. You were there. You were the one facing the bullets, not us. If the people don't defend our defenders, who will be there for us? What I don't understand is how, what I really don't understand, and I know that you're in a difficult situation. I wouldn't expect you to join me in my contempt for uh, the forces within the military who did this to you, but they were talking about things that you never did. You weren't even at the point of the incident. Isn't that correct? That, that's correct. That is. Um, they were, they were uh, charging me with uh, not, like you said, not, in, not properly investigating the whole, the whole thing, um, but... Uh, I, I, again, I just want to... So they, so, you. so they basically said, we're not going to strip you of your pension and we're not putting you in prison, correct? That, that is correct, Dr. Savage. They, uh, as a result of, of all the outpouring from you all for the, you know, the, just the money and the, the uh, moral support that you gave, um, you, you all made a difference in this case, and, uh, and that, that was, that was the, the finding. Uh, they said that my performance was substandard. I didn't expect them to do anything less. A two-star general had relieved me of command, and I did not expect that they would overrule what he had done to me and if they would have said anything else and that would have been overruling uh, what he said but it was uh it was good that uh they found no misconduct e even though there, it wasn't even like a court of law where you have to have a, a higher standard it was a very low threshold for uh finding guilt mm. it was a 51 percent uh mm. the rules of evidence didn't apply and they still did not prove their case i just uh that's amazing. Yeah, That's is. amazing. It's that it's that weak. They can they can condemn a man with that weak a, a case of it. So I know you don't want to badmouth anybody. I can certainly understand the situation you're in. You're breathing a sigh of relief that it's all over and you can get on with your life. How many years did you give to this country as a, as a as a uh, a military man? Uh, almost twenty three years. And this is the reward. How many <laughs> years have they dragged? How many years have you been dragged through the hot coals, Colonel? On this one, I think this. Uh, I guess January of uh, 06 is really when the when this really started coming to light, like you said, and so uh, more than four years. Four years of hell. So it's taken a tremendous toll, I would imagine, on yourself and your family. It's, yeah, the people the people were for you, but my God, what are you going to do with your life now? Do you know yet? Um, I don't. I got, I got to tell you, um, not that I am Jonah, but by any stretch, I, I feel like Jonah today. I was when I when I got my. Uh, DD-214 and my orders uh, that, that gave me an honorable discharge, I felt like that 
through all this, God has given me a second chance. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I know we're going to spend some uh, time with our family, with my wife's family. We've been away from them for 12 years, and uh, we're just going to spend some time with them and, and really spend some time uh, with my family, just to, my immediate family, with my kids and my wife, just to get, get uh, on solid ground. Colonel, of the eight Marines initially charged in the so-called incident, six Marines, including yourself, had criminal charges dismissed and one was acquitted. Only one Marine still faces criminal charges. Who is that individual? That's Staff Sergeant uh, Frank Wooderich. He's still facing the p- potential of jail time? He he is. His, uh, his hearing is um, scheduled to start, I believe, on September 13th, if I'm not mistaken. And is the Thomas Moore Law Center representing him as well? No, they're not. Um, I, th- I want to say uh, Mr. Neil Puckett is representing him. Oh, I had that attorney on. Yeah, well, we'll do the best we can to help him as well. I appreciate that. Uh, look, I don't want to go back over old history here, but what did they say uh, was was not done right? In the house clearing? What are they talking about? Um, boy, this... Uh, <laughs> No, no, forget about it. I don't want to drag. I know what they're talking about. Right. They were saying that you're you're in the middle of a fire a firefight. You're in the middle of a, a zone where people are being whacked by roadside bombs. You're a U.S. Marine, and you're supposed to have your men go in there and clear a house where terrorists are hiding behind women. And the standard rules of operation wasn't it to throw stun grenades into that room before entering and then spray the room with with uh, with machine gun fire to avoid get, the soldiers getting killed themselves. That that's true. That's how you make entries into into rooms after. If you suspect or you believe or you're under fire, yes, sir, that's what you do. Right. But so how could they then, after the fact, say that you 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 didn't? Those rules are clearly written that at the time those were the rules of engagement. Correct. Right. Right. All right. So then they say after the fact, what they want you to do, go in there with a a camel burger and offer them some pita bread to please come out with the roadside bomb. No, sir. No, I'm, I'm not. No, I'm I'm not trying to make something as serious as this into into something silly. But it seems to me that this is a, a case that never should have been brought against you and these other men to begin with. You're all heroes as far as we're concerned. I really appreciate that, Dr. Savage. I really do. Well, I don't want to drag you back in history. I think you want to look forward. Something tells me that that's where you'd rather go is look forward. Yeah. And I hope to. I hope you can put your life back together again. I'm only glad that you got you got your pension. That That's what I was worried about because, yes. boy, this this is a bad situation for a man who put so many years into a, into the military, isn't it? It was, and, and again, I, I just thank you for for you personally committing to my case and, and financially supporting me, morally supporting me. Uh, I thank you for enabling the Thomas More Center to uh, uh, fight for me. I, I tell you, I was just blessed to, to have the attorneys that I had. Uh, Rob Muse was just, he's a warrior. I had uh, Captain Jeff King and uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Shelburne and, and Brian Rooney. I know you know Brian Rooney running for Congress. Yes, they were, yes. I was so blessed to have... Uh, just a great team of attorneys in my corner in, in, the, in uh, the Thomas More Law Center. It was just... Uh, you know, uh, Colonel, now that you, you, you see what you've gone through, there's another young man, and I don't want to drag you into this, but there's a man named Michael Behenna. Right. And this man is an Army Ranger who is sitting in Fort Leavenworth right now with a 20-year sentence for, for in a very similar situation in some ways. And I would like to see if we, if we can help him as well. I mean, I'm going to devote a lot of time to this again now. People can go on to michaelsavage.com and see what, what happened to him. How, right, I saw is that this, is, there was a, a, a gentleman that, that had exculpatory evidence for him, and the, and the government sent him away and didn't allow him to testify, and I thought that was pretty, pretty disgraceful. Let me ask a general question, and I'll let you go. I don't want to make you uncomfortable in any way, Colonel, but in the history of the modern military, has there ever been a time when active duty soldiers and Marines were so put on the defensive by their own government as in in, in the, c- the current time and I don't mean just under president obama have has there ever been a time when so, when when men in 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 the combat zone have had to fight with such rules of engagement with such scrutiny I am not sure about that I would probably say uh no there hasn't been I, I would say that the, that that the uh rules of engagement have gotten scrutinized more uh, in the last several years than uh, in any time in our history, um, probably. Well, it's going to take a historian to put this in context, but my gut tells me that uh, they put you fellas into a no-win situation, and uh, I know that if they were in the situation, the people who condemned you, I doubt that they could have come up to the to the standards that you yourself 
uh, you know, exhibited in, in plain English. 